All right. All right. So, um, first of all, good Chodesh, everyone. Chodesh ER. A very, a very Mesugal Vika Chodesh for Refua. Because ER is Rosh Tevis. Ani Hashem Rav Echa. Abena said that, that all different kind of medicine have a, a special propensity to work during Chodesh Iyar. And Rabbeinu uses the word May, the month of May. He's not using the year, yeah. he's the month of May, yes. Like that. that the refuse have a special, uh, any, no, any kind of medicine you take. Yeah, he says that that during May it has extra kayak, you know, to help. Yeah. Yep. Says yep. And he uses the, the May. May. He uses May. He doesn't. And uh, all right. How much? We're not that far off. Okay. We're eighteen. Yeah. So. Oh, I think you're eighteen. Any medicine stuff? Yeah. And as we said the last time, when Pinchas Koritzer, if rain is coming down during the period of Sphira, you go out, you let your head get wet, open up your mouth, let a few drops come into your mouth, school for refuah from Pinchas Koritz. Yeah. Yeah, we said a funny story. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here we go, Toyo Samach. After we have gone over the fact that there are some people who are simply sleeping away their lives, they're dreamwalking. They're, they're, they, they, they fell into a bechina of sleep. Spiritually, they're asleep. Why? Either because they ate food that not with the right kavana. It's Rabino calls it food that wasn't purified. The machal odom to to, uh, to to human consumption. That means, by the way, in Sikha Sarana, Rabino says legabe fruits and vegetables that uh, specifically about fruits, not vegetables, that a person shouldn't eat them before they're fully ripe. To eat the fruits before they're, they're fully ripe. So Rabino says that it still has a very strong pulling power of, of life force. So if a person eats it before it's fully ripe, it takes away from the life force of the person. So Rabino says, that, Rabino says that if if you happen to have a fruit which is not fully fully eaten, so if you put it in in the corner just to ripen by itself, he it says it's also good. good. Yeah, it, it doesn't have to be doesn't have to ripen dafka on the tree. I mean, it's better on the tree, but if you happen to have you know, a fruit that is not fully it is, just put it aside until it'll. But this is not the kind of, of, of food that we're talking about. We're talking about when a person eats food before that food. Uh, I mean, sorry, when a person eats that food, um, not having the proper kavana in mind. Okay. The proper kavana. Yeah, the proper kavana in mind when he's eating. Yeah. What would be the proper kavana? Yeah. yeah, what do you say? What do you think the proper kavana should be? Yeah. No, no. What would be the proper kavana? What do you think? Yeah. What should you think about when you're eating food? Yeah, what for? For what reason? To serve Hashem, that's right. That's a proper kavana. Yeah. So, Mimela, what's the improper kavana? 
No, what do you say? What would be the covenant which is wrong? For yeah, for what? No, I'm saying what is the this that's the right kavana. What is the wrong kavana? What is the wrong kavana? See, such a tzaddik, he doesn't even know what the wrong kavana is. Oh, yes. Yeah, they're eating for pleasure. Oh, man. I don't know somebody who makes a brocha like this. No, no, no. He doesn't even know what the wrong kavana is. The wrong kavana is eating for pleasure. Even for pleasure, even for fun. What kind of sushi do you like? Do you like the rice inside or outside? You know, it's like a, you know, you like it with tuna or you like it with salmon? Do you like it? Uh... <laughs> oh, cowboy steaks. You know, it's like a, you know, as they, they have these, you know, in, in Texas, there were like two businessmen. There were uh, three businessmen that were sitting down and boasting to each other how rare is the steak that they eat. So one of them says, you probably heard this already before. One of them says, um, uh, I think it's the two of them. One of them says, uh, my steak is, he eats his steak so rare, if he wouldn't have been, if it would have been more rare, in other words, less cooked, the meat would walk off the plate. Would walk off the plate. So the other guy says, that's nothing. One time, you know, my steak was so rare, I turned my head when I looked forward, I saw my steak eating my salad. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's the wrong kavona of eating food. And when a person eats with such a kavona, it puts a person into sleeping his life. So a person goes, what's, what's a big deal? I mean, you can, you know, have a, they say about Nachman uh, Tulchin, I think it was his yard site this week, together, together with the, the same day as uh, Yeshua Binun, the same yard site. So above all of Nachman's, the Babil Kutim, he said that his father, Nachman Tulchina, the talent of Rebnosen, he said he he never salted his food. Never salted? His food. Never added salt to his food. Whatever the food was, that's the way he ate it. He never, you know, tried to make it, you know, taste better. Nothing, ever. Some of this is just a madrega that he was able to. So the point is, obviously, the endless madregas, you know, some people, they can't. I mean, it's, some people don't care, you know, they eat this, they eat hay, I heard they don't care. <laughs> you know, hey, it's food, you know, it's like a, some people, you know, they need to, they said that Ira Nelson, they said when, you know, he came from family that was pretty wealthy, then his father lost all his money and Reb Nelson had to sell all the, the silverware that he had, he had silver silverware, you know, and he sold them and he started eating with wooden utensils. Uh, so uh, he said, he said that the first few months of eating with wooden utensils, he said that he, he didn't feel any taste in the food. As a Nelson. In other words, so you know, some people can't. They need the, the, the food to taste a little, you know. Otherwise, it's that's not music. I mean, my robe of Malev, After he eats food, he needs to eat something sweet, because otherwise, it's that and it's not music. That's how he is. I mean, his his diet. Since I remember him. Uh, can you can you uh, please uh, mute yourself, Robert Wise? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, since I remember him, I mean, I've known him about forty-five years or so. Um, uh, he eats uh, a scrambled egg for breakfast. No, no, 
he eat, for breakfast, he eats a piece of bread with some honey on it and a cup of tea. And for dinner, he eats a, a, some kind of a tavita, a scrambled egg. That's it. Yeah, he, he, he's a race. I mean, he's like this thing. But he says, nevertheless, at the end of his week, he needs to eat something sweet. Otherwise, it's dust of Yusuf. So, I mean, you can say, listen, I need, person needs his food to be, you know, you know, tasty into that particular fact. There's nothing wrong with that. The main thing is that the idea is that you should eat in order to have kaya to serve God's If a person doesn't, he puts it into, into a spiritual sleep. And the way to awaken him up is through telling him Sipurimaisis, which is a Torah Gavor, which is embedded in Sipurimaisis. And that will wake him up. We said a few reasons why this is because the person that was asleep for so long, it's like a person who is, has been blind, he, he didn't see light for a long time. So if he's, a person is sick with his eyes, Lolena, and suddenly he's healed, the light can blind him. So you have to introduce him to light gradually. So you can't, you know, this. I assume that he also, I assume he did other things as well. Yeah, yeah. That's what people know. That's what people know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we say either this, the second thing we said, the reason why the Torah has to be concealed is because when a person is asleep, he doesn't live in a vacuum. He basically uh, lives in a, uh, he's in the clutches of the, of the clippers. And they're, they're holding him. If they will realize that he's trying to get away, you know, they won't let him get away. You know, they hold on to him. So it has to be hidden. And it says, when they start, when they wake up, they start speaking very powerfully to Kodesh Baruch Hu. That Koyach comes to the spiritual, the people that had the biggest trust in the Kaddish Baruch Hu in the generation, and who calls them Batchane Hador, those are Bitochen, the big Bala Bitochen of the generation. And spiritually, Bitochen is the thing that gives birth to everything. When you have Bitochen that you can do a job, it doesn't matter. If you are sure that you can do this job, uh, chances are you can do the job. Maybe you have some difficulties, you'll learn. You'll learn. But if a person is not, doesn't trust that he can do the job, maybe this, maybe that, you know, then he he procrastinates and this and that, whatever it is. Kitsura doesn't get done. It doesn't bring fruit. It doesn't, there's no, it doesn't give birth. Because it says, told us social tzaddiki, the Rashi says, so anyhow, so they, when the Batshana don't get the Koyach from that, all those people that starts, that awake up from their slumber and start talking the Koyach Godel, that opens up the mouths of barren women that are able to give birth. When they give birth, that brings about a tremendous amount of year. When Sarah Menu you know, you know, got got dispense a special dispensation of of providence, you know, on on uh, to give birth to Yitzchak. She was ninety years old. You know, it was on Rosh Hashanah. The Sarah Bichlal is represents the Malchus. Represents, you know, why it's called Sarah because she 
She is ruling over the entire world. She was there. And the Rosh Hashanah, of course, that's the day of Yira, that's the, the great day of Yira. So when when the Akarats, you know, give birth, when any woman gives birth, there's there's a great expression of Yira in the world. Especially when barren women that waited for so long to give birth, they they become expected to give birth. That causes a great expression of Yira in the world. That Yira afterwards, as we say, you know, is 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 with this Yira, first in the Zorcha too, as we said, Arichas Yomim, Pina Zokin, that a person enlarges his days every single day, more Kedusha, more Kedusha, more Kedusha, a new rot to Sarah Kodesh Baruch Maybe, okay, working, I'm not saying my brochas with enough Kavana, Whatever it is, this is called the person who's widening his days. Yeah, when you talk about a car, like a woman who's pregnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So during the month of Eir, is that also like is that like a time that? Uh, this I, I don't think it has anything to do with that or what we said now. Yeah, we just said. No, no, I just said we get in Chodesh. We spoke a little bit about that Eir, and we moved on. It's not. It's not. It, this I don't think it has to do with this Torah. No. Anyhow, so once you have that, when, when you add to your days, that makes your days long. Because any time that you spend of your day not doing something in favor of the purpose that you live for, it's a waste of time. As if the day doesn't exist. Then we say, Avram was looking. Avram is old. Baba Yomim. What does it mean, Baba Yomim? So Hazal said, you know, that Avram Zokin, he's old, but it's not just that he's chronologically old. Baba Yomim means he came with all his days. He fully lived all the days of his life. Because Avram Avinu added more Kedusha to every day that he lived. So his days were complete. You know, some people come to Eilam Abba and maybe they have like five minutes. They only live for five minutes. Maybe some people live for two minutes. Maybe somebody passed away at age 100 and he actually have only one year of life, of real life. Yeah. He stayed in this world for 100 years. Uh, how, how much time did he actually use to serve a Kaddish Baruch out of that 100 years? Maybe a month, maybe a year, maybe a week, maybe two hours, maybe two minutes. You know, some people do. Avram Zakin, Baba Yom, he came with all these days. So that action of widening your days is called arichos yomim. That's called longevity. This is called longevity. And when a person has this kind of longevity, this is the, the digital wallet that you need to get this ashirus nikdusha that enables a person to get a great insight into certain roots in the Torah that require great wealth to, to, to get them. And this is what Sarvina said in the very beginning. We started the Torah said that you can't get to this kind of insight unless you possess great ashiras. This ashiras can be either physical or spiritual. And we said that that usually those who the entire Torah came through benigla were actually wealthy benigla. You know, Moshe Rabbeinu, Rabbi Yudanasi, Ravashi, Ravina, all the Nevi'im, they were all very wealthy men. Because the entire Torah came through them. Benigla, the entire Torah came through them, passed through them. That's Benigla. Those that the entire Torah came through them, Benister, their wealth is spiritual. It's not physical wealth, it's already spiritual. They also have they also have to do a certain action of physical wealth 
as a simon. When Rabbeinu said this, this Torah, he sent, we said he sent uh, Rabbi Shmuel, his Talmud, Rabbi Shmuel that went with him the famous trip to Kamenitz um, to buy the lease for the stores in Mezhibos. The lease in Mezhibos, all the stores were up for lease once in three years. So Rabbi Nusayr and Rabbi Shmuel, you know, go buy the lease for me. Go to Mezhibos and buy the lease for me. This, we said the story once before you went and he bought the stores. Now Rabbi Shmuel was wearing, you know, rubbish clothing. I mean, he was a very close to read. And Rabbi Baruch of Mezhibos, Rabbi Nusayr's uncle, saw him, you know, going, you know, just got the lease for all the stores. He was walking down with this rubbish of clothing, you know, in the main street of Mezhibos. Rabbi Mezhibos cursed him with leprosy for a year. The Baruch of Mezhibos cursed him that he should be a leper for a full year. So when he came, Rabbi Shmuel came, Rabbi Shmuel came to Rabbeinu and he told him about it. And he told him two things. First of all, that's the way you show yourself to Rabbi Baruch of Mezhibos, wearing Rabbi Shmuel clothing, walking in the middle of the street. A little single. That's the way you walk. Rabbi Baruch of Mezhibos is the way you walk for him. And he said, secondly, he actually did you a great favor. He says, because actually you were supposed to pass away this year. And the Book of Mezhibos exchanged it for you that for a whole year, you will be, you will suffer from leprosy and you won't die. Because we know, Metzer Chashuv Kames, right? So he, so he did your favorite. Well, I, on the look of him, what, 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 what are you cursing him? What, what's the story? What's going on here? He did your great favor. He saved your life. You know, so nevertheless, this is uh, now, we are going to explain. Yeah, but he didn't tell him to go in the street with rubbish clothing after he bought the whole thing with such guy, you know, that, you know, you know, kick me hold, you know, like a cat, a cat in the hat, you know, look at me, look at me now. I mean, said, hey, you know, like you bought the stores, you know, slink away. <laughs> this is the time of both of measurables, you know, well, you don't walk around as if you own the joint. Yeah. And then, uh, I mean, the, the biggest tzaddikim were trembling before Rebbeuch of Nezhibos. The biggest tzaddikim yeah. were trembling before Rebbeuch of Nezhibos. It a, it's a known thing. They trembled before what? Before what? Before No, Rebbeuch of Nezhibos, his uncle. Oh, He's the Baal Shem Tov's grandson. He was a very, he was a, 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 a you cannot say he was a dinim, he was a kapodon, he was a, he was, he was full of, with his derech was with dinim. And it was a big machlekas between him and the Baal Tanya. Yeah, grandson. grandson. When was the great grandson? He was Rabbeinu's uncle. The Ephraim of Sadlik of the Degel Machne Ephraim and the Boch of Meshabosh and Fege, Rabbeinu's mother, were all, you know, brothers and a sister. The three children of Odl, the daughter of the Baal Shem Tov. So there was a big machoikas between the, uh, the, the Balatanya and the Boch of Meshabosh. And when the Balatanya came out of jail, from Peterburg. So the first place he went to, he went to Rabbeinu. And it was very broken. It was a scary, you know, a scary position. The jail of the Tsar in Russia. He, he was supposed to be, he was supposed to be capital punishment of Sheminach. I mean, it was a, uh, the Balatanya, it was there, uh, they, they make your, your oh, test. I'm not sure what I think. I don't know if the machlok is to do with the either the the uh, the money of Mayor Balanes where it should go to, 
or about the Hasidus that he was Megal. I'm not sure what the story is. I don't know. I can't tell you. But the point is that he came to Rabbeinu. As a, the Balatani was so shaken by his stay in, in jail that he actually forgot his thousand film there. At Kadekach, you know, it's a, when he came to Rabbeinu, so Rabbeinu wanted to, you know, miroim his das, you know, to bring him back to his madrigas. So Rabbeinu went out, he took all the, the people of town, of Breslov, they told him Balatani is coming, and everybody came out. They wore big the Shabbos, they all came out of town and to receive him. And one of Rabbeinu's Hasidim, the afterwards became a misnag on the Gamnosen, uh, the Moshe name was a big veer, he was a wealthy man. So when they came to the Balatanians, so Rabbeinu told them, give a gift to the, to the Sarah Elif, to the minister of a thousand. He called the Balatanians Sarah Elif. So, no, I said, give him, give me a, a Nesina. So he gave him a big Nesina, oh, it's like, like $100,000. You know, heavy duty, you know? So the uh, Abena says, this is what you give Sarah Elif? That's all you give to Sarah Elif? So he gave another such Nesina, another $100,000. And that elevated, you know, the the the, 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 the Balatari to, uh, to his level. So when he gave the second time, when he said, well, if you don't know how much to give to this, you know, to the Sarah Elif, that's fine, that's enough. <laughs> you know, with this, he, he gave Chizuk to the Balatanya, you know, and he brought him back to his Madrigas. And the Balatanya came to Breslov specifically. It's the first place he, came, he went out of jail immediately came to Rabbeinu. And he asked him to make peace between him and Rebarach of Mejimosh, who was Rabbeinu's uncle. So Rabbeinu told him, even in, in, in Chabad, they know about that. It's a thing. You know, uh, uncle in Yiddish is fetter. Fetter. That's 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 an uncle. So Rabbeinu told him, Fetterberg, you know, St. Petersburg, you overcame. Fetter Baruch, you're not going to overcome. You know, it ain't going to happen. Itaka didn't happen. But anyhow, so here we're talking about everything that we spoke about is the Torah in the nutshell. Now Rabbeinu is going to explain how all this is embedded in the Indian of Shoifer. Kiyas Shoifer. The Zeb Chinas Shoifer. The Shoifer Chinas is Sorry Sashayna. Shoifer is the awakening from the sleep. Why do people, why would you blow Shoifer? Shoifer, you, you, you blow Shoifer, you know, to awaken people up. Huh? Oh, thee who are asleep, awake from your sleep. And with this, the shofar constitutes to undo the mouth of the mute. These are the people who sleep their lives, sleeping their lives. And to undo the mouth of barren women that they should be able to give birth. When a person awakes from his spiritual sleep, and to speak to HaKadosh Baruch Hu with great strength, that strength goes to Klei Ayiloda, the tools of, of, of reproduction, this Batchan Adar, and that brings about birthing in the world. Abayinu says, the Shofar constitutes all this. shvorim truah. Each one of these form of Tkiyas Shoifer represents one of the parts of this process that we have gone through. Here, Tkiyah represents a other Dibur. There's no Dibur. Person who's asleep can talk. They said he is like deaf and mute. He doesn't talk. He's sleeping his life. If a person speaks in his sleep, he's not normal, right? So a <laughs> person who's asleep, he doesn't talk. What does he speak? He speak about shtusim. You know, government did this, government did that, whatever. He's not even talking. He's just, it's like uh, last week's newspaper. Who cares, you know? 
Chinas takata lazarka pecho. You have you have uh, uh, um, you you have given your 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 promise, you know, to somebody a foreign kapecha. Nokashta bimer picha. You have failed in the sayings of your mouth. What what is alluded to in this? Nokashta bimer picha. You stumbled in the speech of your mouth. Means nil kadato. You were trapped. This is, in other words, the Debor was trapped. You cannot talk. This is Tkiyah. Tkiyah basically means, you know, Tukasi Yotav B'mokam Neman. He says, I stuck him as, 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 a, as, a, you know, as a thud in, in a faithful place. Tkiyah, Nishon Tkiyah, when a person is stuck, right? What is Tkiyah? Tkiyah is being stuck, right? When when somebody when says I'm stuck on itakua, right? I'm stuck. Tkia represents being stuck. The deeper is stuck, you can't talk. You go to make this better dose, you know you're supposed to. And you feel like doing it like you're feeling having a root canal without Novocaine. I mean, don't want to do it. The deeper isn't trapped. Okay. Now we up to Trua. Trua is because Dibur. Trua, now we're talking about Dibur. SF Sif say Tzadik, you're a rabbi. You know, the, the, the mouth of, you know, of the Tzadik. It says, you rabbi, may many, many people eat from the fruit of his mouth. It means the Sif say Tzadik, which is the Dibur, when the Dibur is free, flea frying, the Pinas Trua. Sif is like Yiru, Lashon Trua. Yiru with the Ein, you know, will shepherd. Will shepherd the many. Yiro is shown trua. Trua is yiro. Shvarim. Shvarim ze pkinas bitochen. Shvarim represents the the midah of bitochen. As David the Melech says in Tehillim, Sivroi al Hashem elokav. His trust is bitochen. Is on Hashem. His on Hashem is God. Shubotech Hashem. You trusting Hashem. So you know that the bitochen is pina shvarim. Tkia, you're stuck. No deeper. Shrua, you say tzadik, you get the deeper back. Shvarim, you get the bitochen. Komosha kosov, that's when in Shaya, there's now he sees all these things put together. Ani ashbi veloili. Will I bring a woman, you know, to, you know, to the, the edge of giving birth and I won't open her a womb, you know, to get the, 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 the baby out. So you see that shvarim, ani ashbi, is on shvarim. The word, same kind, it's the same shayr, the same root. So ashbi v'la oilitz, you see that shvarim, bitochen, has to do with giving birth. That they live in the same neighborhood. The shvarim alludes to the union of giving birth. They are shayfer. It is through the shayfer. That's the awakening from one's sleep. All day, then a person achieves the beginning of latipe ilmin, latipe occurs to untie the mouth of the mute and to untie the mouth of birthing women. In other words, the force of the dibor, the koyach of the dibor that comes out of those who suddenly, you know, woke up and smell the coffee. You know, I've been living my life for I don't know how many years. You know, okay, I do this, okay, how about that, okay. Suddenly a person wakes up, you know, life has passed me by. What the heck is going on? When a person wakes up and he sees the talking for his life, a person is startled. Then he starts calling HaKadosh Baruch Hu with tremendous strength. <coughs> tremendous strength. Before they were, you know, they, 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 were, they had no deeper, they had no talking. They were like deaf and mute. When the shofar awakens you, and may, awakens the people who are asleep from their slumber to Hashem and out to show him through this, they hear the Sarah Sachochama Emes that they are able, in other words, they, they have to wake up on their own. It has to start with you. 
if you are not doing anything, it ain't going to go anywhere. But once you start, you can very easily fall back asleep. So then once you wake up, your Zohar, the Tzaddik starts, you know, keeping you awake and driving you, you know, forward with, with Sipur and Isis. As I'm not feeling that, but then you start talking to the Shem Yisbara, as we say. In other words, Dafka, because before the Diver was so locked up, it was so stuck and it didn't come out. Now, for such a long time, they were like deaf and mute. Now, when it comes out, it comes out with an explosion. You know, it's like a, there was a great pressure. Suddenly, boom, comes out. That Diver, that Diver, it comes out with great strength. Baal toch clear, Lord. It comes to the productive scaling, which is the Patchanea door. These are the people they, they had great trust about Levi Tochen or the generation, that they are the ones who bring our Yiloda in the world. Valdez in the chorus. This is bring about the barren women are being uh, given special providence to give birth. How do we know Remember, we said who was the famous barren woman that became well blessed? Sarai Meino. When it happened on Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah is the day of the revelation of the greatest era, right? As Rosh Hashanah, the king is coming. Rosh Hashanah, Shas Nifkedes Sarah. This is the time when with Sarah, you know, and then there were many, many barren women. There were also, no, no, no. She became expecting. She was given that specific providence, special dispensation of Asgocha from Hakadosh Baruch Hu. To become expecting the age 90. That happened in Rosh Hashanah. And she wasn't the only one. She wasn't the only oh, one. No, she became expecting. Oh, she conceived. Uh huh. Okay. And she wasn't the only one. Okay. She wasn't the only one. There were many, many barren women at that time that couldn't give birth for a long time. They also became expecting. And the thing is, the Torah says, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, whenever he reveals himself, he hides himself. So we know that when Sarah Meino became, she conceived. All the you know all these barren women also conceived. So this is a, a tremendous, tremendous chus of Sarah Meino. That she she conceived that all these akaras has all, have also conceived. Now, what would the jokers in the generation say? There was no. The bchalal said, you know, that it happened to have been. It's not because of sorry, you know. And if there been you know, something in the water, you see, she wasn't the only one. There were many other cars that also became all conceived on that time. So it was something in the world, uh, the weather, or I don't know, whatever it is. It, it's a, a natural thing. That's what the world would say. She gave birth. No. She, she, know she conceived. How do they know that? Because when they gave birth later on, they knew that they, they conceived it before. So suddenly, you know, they all gave birth nine months later. You know, everybody were like, whoa. You know, well, Sarah Mena, she was 90 years old. It's a great miracle. And all these Akaras were, you know, were conceived and gave birth also. That's later on. I mean, they, you know, they each time they kept on, ah, it wasn't because of Sarah Mena. Something happened in the world, something was in the water. They all conceived. Okay. When they gave birth, when they gave birth, you know, then. The Bechlau said, okay, so maybe it was Sarah but Sarah was with Avram Avinu for 90 years and she never conceived. She spends a night by Avimelech and suddenly she's conceived, she has conceived. No, add one and one. This is how she says, like the jokers, you know, just said, you know, the real father of Avimelech. So, Kaddish Baruch Hu, made Yitzchak Avinu a copy, copy-paste of Avram Avinu. Yeah, you couldn't tell the difference. You'd see Avram Avinu, say, I'm not Avram Avinu, I'm Yitzchak. 
אז זה שם הולך עם רבי יצחק, רבי מאוד יצחק, אבל אברהם אבינו, עד כדי כך, אברהם אבינו had beg הקדוש ברוך הוא to give all age in the world, and his beard will become white, because people couldn't tell between young people and old people. And, and not only this, and they said that, that uh, at the beginning that they wanted even to say before that, 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 he, that he looked like, like Avram, they said, nah, she did not, they sort of didn't give birth to, to Yitzhak. They, they found the kid somewhere and they, uh, so Hashem made another miracle. Me and Ma, the Tzchok Asali Elohim, Hashem made, you know, a merriment for me. Me and Ma, Enika Bonim Sara. The Boch made another miracle. Oh, there was a big party, you know, with Yom Gamel Asitzchok. All these bad women came with their babies, you know, they gave, they gave birth. And none of them had any milk to feed their babies. And Sarah Emenu fed all those babies. But the Shabbat who showed them that if not for Sarah Emenu, you would not have given birth. Now you know it's because of her schos. So then he said, yeah, but it's probably Avimela. So the Shabbat who made Yitzchak, now that each time the Shabbat who reveals himself, we say, okay, now we know, now Hashem is here. A minute later, eh, you know, the same to I never forget, years ago. Ah, da, 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 23 years ago. I came from America. We came from America to Israel. And we went, I went to the airport. We forgot a box in the airport. We came with many boxes. We got a box in the airport. So I went with my cousin. When driving in my sister's car, we went to the airport to pick up the box. Okay, we came back. And where my sister used to live in Tel Aviv, no parking, not even in jest, not even as a joke, not, there is no parking, forget about it. But she lives in one of those little streets, you know, like everybody like, hey, no parking. So as, so we're going around the block. So my cousin said, listen, do me a favor, drop me off by your sister's house, go find parking. I said, no, you're coming with me. And I said, Rebani Shalom, please give us a parking space. Bishos of Rabbeinu Nachman. And as we rounded the corner, there's a small car, I mean, my sister had a small car, comes out of a parking space, and on the window it had, na, na, nachma, nachma, <laughs> So my cousin said, I, I can't believe this. You know, this is a miracle. Nobody will believe me. I'll tell the people, nobody will believe me. I told him, I'll lie that you should believe yourself in a few days that you saw a miracle. Yeah. A few weeks later, I said, do you remember yourself? He says, why do you make such a big noise out of it? <laughs> so I'll lie that you should remember. You should believe it. Other people should believe it. <laughs> you will not believe it. There's a relation, there's forgetting, forgetfulness to come. And this is, is Rosh Hashanah, this is when uh, Saruman conceived. All that is, is embedded in the Indian, the mysteries that are within this Indian of blowing the Shefer Rosh Hashanah. Trua, Shvarim. Tkia, no deeper, awakened to sleep, then become big tikkun. The deeper is awakened, and this is, comes in the clay of The Pekidis Akara is, and when the Akara is conceived and they give birth, it's Gala Yira. That's what we said before. The Pekidis Shefek Moshe Katuv, how do we know that this is a time where Yira starts? In Amos, in the, the, the Novi Amos says, in Taka Shefek Bayir, if a shepherd will be blown in town. Wouldn't the people tremble? In the olden days, they didn't have the sirens, you know? So how, how when, when, when the enemy came, what did they do? They blew shepherd. The, the alarm was a shepherd. 
So when Amos, the, the, the Novi said, will a shepherd be blown in town and the people won't get startled or get here? So you see that when a shepherd, the Ibn of shepherd is to awaken you. It says, we'll, we'll touch this in Mitzvah Shem next week. But the main thing that I want to tell you about this, and I don't want to hold you too long, is this particular Indian. You know, I told this many times, but I'll say it again, because I don't have much to say. So anyhow, so um, it says in the Medrash, that, you know, Rosh Hashanah, you don't say any video. You don't mention any various Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. Oh, yeah. No, no. Yom Kippur, yes. Rosh Hashanah, nothing. Well, in this time of Mishpat, you know, don't talk about that. So, however, however, we do a little bit right after Kir Shefer. Hayom, Arasoylom, in Kibonim, Kavodim, please, you know, but Whispering, you know, shushkening a little bit. So how how come? I mean, it's, it's you don't want to awaken any. You don't want to awake sleeping dogs on Rosh Hashanah, right? So why why do we do this? So the measure says a very interesting thing. It says the Samach Mem hears the shofar blowing. And he gets scared. What? He gets scared. Mm. Why is he scared? Because maybe that's the shofar of Mashiach. And that's his end. He's finished. He's toast. The Shabbat is going to shecht him. So he gets scared. And to be totally honest with you, for years, I found it somewhat immature. It's, 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 some of them doesn't know what's going on. I know it's Kir Shefer Rosh Hashanah. Everybody knows Kir Shefer Rosh Hashanah. Thousands of years of blowing the Shefer. He doesn't know this is Shefer Rosh Hashanah. What's the, what? what am I gonna know? And for the longest time, I didn't admit to anyone that, that I had these thoughts in my mind. <laughs> because of that, come on, what is it? Samech Mem is a little kid. And then it dawned on me. It's exactly the opposite. When a person, when a person, you know, goes to have a checkup. And the doctor says, you know, I want you to retake this test. I didn't like it. Oh, blah, 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 blah. The person gets so rattled, so shaken, so afraid. Wow. How many times in your life did you have a blood test? Or, I don't know, whatever. What, what are you so scared? What, Ah, because a person knows that after everything is said and done, there's going to be a test that's going to come back positive. There's going to be a test that's going to come back not good at the end. There's going to be a test that comes out not good. It's inevitable. In other words, all those thousands of times that I had those tests until then are, 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 are irrelevant. And to do it. In fact, in fact, each time that a person is having that test is getting closer to the one test, the law of law and comes back not good. That's why a person is scared. You don't know what a person doesn't know when that test will be. This is the Indian of the Samach Mem with Kiyas Shef. Samach is much smarter than all of us put together. He knows that inevitably one day that Kia Shafer on Rosh Hashanah will be the Kia Shafer Mashiach. He knows that for sure. 
the fact that we're already blowing shofar for thousands of years and Mashiach didn't come doesn't mean that the test is going to come back negative this time. Maybe that's the time that, that Kiyashev of Mashiach. In fact, every year that passes and Mashiach didn't come previous year, it makes it closer to that one, that the Shafir of Mashiach. In other words, the Samach Mem is not that much smarter than all of us. He knows <laughs> it could, that could be the one. Because it, it took up a Shafir yeah. Godel. Mashiach is, is the death of Mashiach. When did that kill Shafir of Mashiach? I don't know I don't, why Dafka was a shoner to be a, I know that it's going to be a bit key safer, you know, the Yov is going to be on, on Yom Kippur. I'm, I'm not sure, but that's what the major says. Maid's Bechlaut Kiyas He's scared. He's scared because he's smart. We are the stupid ones. Okay, so Kiyashar, did you hear Kiyas? Who was Baltakea? Who was this? Is that? You know, but us, it's like a, something to go through, you, to, you know, to, to put a check mark. Uh, he knows what it means. That's why he's scared. I takabe shoifer. Will the shoifer be blown? And the people wouldn't be shaken. Anybody who has seichel, they have seichel amiti, gets rattled by shoifer. All the you know, anybody who is like you know is sleeping his life. So the shoifer looks like a really unattractive sound. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, we're present the seichel. As great year comes, Rav Hashem will continue next week. Lee and now I want to wish everyone Guten uh, Chodesh, a Chodesh of Refua, Chodesh of Yeshua, Chodesh of Simcha, the Gashmis, the Beruchmis. Hashem is Hashem will fulfill all our hearts' desire. The Tovah, the Levracha, is Hashem. Everybody should have a good Chodesh and a good Shabbos. We have a Ah, okay.